Let's talk about acidity of the alpha carbon. So we're going to define the alpha carbon as the carbon, which is next door to a polar pi bond functional group. So a carbonyl is an example of such a functional group. And that alpha carbon is going to be right next door. We'll label it with an alpha uh, to that. So um, what's important about the alpha carbon? Well, unlike a normal carbon, such as the carbon of ethane, CH3CH3, with no resonance potential or stabilization, if we were to try to deprotonate this with a base, we would create a carbanion which is not stabilized in the least and end up with something that has a very strong base um, as a conjugate base and ultimately if we were to define it in terms of the acid dissociation equation overall an alkane is going to have a pKa greater than about 60 so that's an enormous number we're not um, going to be acidic at that point but like a carboxylic acid for example I can stabilize the conjugate base through resonance in two resonance forms so that's something that we've looked at already um, with functional groups with an alpha carbon that's acidic we are going to see the exact same thing and so let's look at that and kind of tighten up our um, decision on when this is possible here it's going to be possible in the absence of more acidic functional groups such as that carboxylic acid. So if we look at the ester here that we've got above, that ester doesn't have a CH that is more acidic than the alpha carbon, like a carboxylic acid would have something that's more acidic and therefore that proton would leave first. But the ester doesn't have that, that's a CH3 over here, and so that's not going to be very acidic um, by the nature of the bonding arrangement. And so at this point, we have an alpha carbon, and we're going to be able to stabilize the conjugate base with resonance. Let's look at a couple ways to deprotonate here. There are three alpha hydrogens. We could draw all three. We don't have to. Just one will do to show this deprotonation. But if we take an appropriate base, and we'll talk more about that um, when we talk about alkylation and reactions of these alpha carbons. Right now, let's just look at the resonance form we can show an alpha carbanion form um, in this way and we would end up with a structure that looks like this. The alpha carbanion, we don't have to have the lone pair there, but we can put it there just to be um, careful to show that uh, as we're learning about the alpha carbanion. That alpha carbon is going to be nucleophilic once the carb carbanion is formed. So that can act as a nucleophile um, and attack an electrophile. All right. Well, it's not the most stable form of resonance in this structure. In fact, we could show the formation of the enolate just as easily. So if we pull off that proton, form a pi bond, and then kick up this lone pair, we end up with an enolate form, resonance contributor, Um, that is a little bit more stable because oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. It's better to have that negative charge on oxygen than it is on carbon. Oxygen um, here is not going to be as nucleophilic as the alpha carbanion for most reactions because it's more, again, it's stabilizing that negative charge. So we still attack with the alpha carbanion. And the way we would show that in the mechanism is we would attack our electrophile by reforming the carbonyl and then attacking with the alpha carbon. So we could show it either way. A moment ago we showed it as a direct attack of that lone pair to the electrophile. We could also show it as reforming the carbonyl and then using the pi bond to attack an electrophile. Most advanced textbooks um, and papers you're going to see the enolate form used whenever possible because it is the most stable resonance form the resonance hybrid is going to resemble that form um, more. If you want to show the um, interchange of the alpha carbanion to the enolate, you do it as such. But remember, those electrons aren't actually moving. They're already kind of stable. They're already in a hybrid state. We just can't draw both states um, at once without um, using the hybrid structure. And so typically, you'll see one or the other drawn. All right. So 
All of these functional groups that we're going to look at have alpha carbons. I'm going to back out just a moment so you can kind of see how I've organized everything. So on the left-hand side, we've got monofunctionalized um, functional groups, one single functional group that each have an alpha carbon. On the right-hand side, we've got two such functional groups with an alpha carbon in the middle of the two functional groups. So let's look at our single functional groups first. In both columns, the most acidic or the least acidic, excuse me, the least acidic is at the top. Um, functional group is at the top. And then the most acidic will be at the bottom of each column. On the left hand side, let's get started with our least acidic functional group, the tertiary amide. So what we want to do here, the mechanism for forming the enolate form, the, the alpha carbanion form, it's the same for all of these functional groups. We'd identify the alpha carbanion of the tertiary amide here. What I want to do is explain why the amide, the tertiary amide, has a pKa, that's what this column will represent, has a pKa of 30, whereas the ester alpha carbon that we just looked at has a pKa of 25. What's the difference? How can we rank these out um, and, and explain the difference? Well, for um, stabilization, we need somewhere to send the lone pair of the alpha carbanion. So oxygen's more electronegative than carbon. So for the ester that we looked at first, we send that electron pair into oxygen. The amide, it turns out, has less room for that electron pair because the amide is already strongly resonating a lone pair into oxygen. And so you're competing at that point when you have your alpha carbanion, you're competing with a resonance form that already is pumping a high degree of negative charge into that oxygen already. There's just not as much room for this electron pair to enter that oxygen um, as, as there would be in the ester. Okay, so because the stabilization is less, because the stabilization is less there, um, you end up with a higher pKa. Less stabilization of the base means less acidic. The other resonance form um, the stabilized form would look like this, but it kicks that um, lone pair back onto nitrogen. And so you can't really stabilize either lone pair at the same time using resonance forms, but we know MO theory, a little bit of both is happening at once, but that's why the amide is less stable. Now, if we had a secondary amide or a primary, you'd have protons that are more acidic than the alpha carbon, and so we won't see the secondary or tertiary amide or primary amide in our discussion at this time, okay? Looking at the ester, we've already seen that in, in above. It's a little bit less acidic than the amide. Uh, it's about the same as a nitrile. A nitrile has an alpha carbon next door to the polar pi bond. So there's our polar pi bond, CN triple bond. Carbon and nitrogen, different electronegativity. If we deprotonate there, we kick up a lone pair onto nitrogen and we get a resonance form um, that is analogous to the enolate that looks like this. The reason it's um, about the same as the esters because nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon and so it accepts that lone pair uh, more readily than carbon does. Okay, So that's uh, going to be a good form. So over here the alpha carbanion form, on the right hand side the stabilized form. The alpha carbanion is still the nucleophilic side. With ketones, we're a little bit more um, acidic because we don't have competition like we did with the ester. There's still a little bit of competition here for resonance into that carbonyl with the ester. With a ketone, we don't have that. We have a pure carbonyl, pure CO double bond, but we do have two alpha carbons. Here they are the same because it's uh, uh, acetone or, or two propanone. They are equivalent, so there's not a big deal. But if we did have another group, you would have two different alpha carbons and then the term kinetic and thermodynamic enolate come into play. Um, and so that's a, a topic for another lesson, but let's talk about the relative acidity of our um, ketone here. So if we did pull the proton off of this alpha carbon, there's the alpha carbanion form. We resonate into oxygen. Oxygen has more room for those electrons because there's not another, again, another oxygen here competing for that. And so the ketone 
about five orders of magnitude more, uh, more acidic than an ester or a nitrile. So um, again, when we talk about pKa, a difference in five units is 10 to the five to one in the equilibrium constant. So that's a big difference in acidity, even five pKa units. An aldehyde is slightly more acidic than a ketone because unlike a ketone, once we form the alpha carbanion, we've got a hydrogen on the other side of that carbonyl rather than another carbon group. Well, with carbon groups, we have an electron cloud with p orbitals that can donate electron density into that oxygen through a term called hyperconjugation. So we talked about this in terms of carbocation stability. All right, so with carbocation stability, hyperconjugation stabilizes a positive charge by donating into the carbocation. It destabilizes a negative charge. Hydrogen exists on the nodal plane, the S orbital, exists on the nodal plane of the, car of the pi system, the highest energy system, and so it doesn't interact with the carbonyl like that the, the three p orbitals on the carbon group next door in the ketone. And so aldehydes are a little bit more stable in their enolate form. So if we were to show the ketone enolate, you've got this R group pumping a little bit of hyperconjugation into that oxygen, um, destabilizing it, making the pKa 20. With the aldehyde enolate, you don't have that same effect um, destabilizing the negative charge. So it's a little bit more acidic. A nitro group is uh, much more acidic, so a difference of 10 to the 8 between the aldehyde and the nitro group, and we can explain that by looking at the full structure of this nitro group. So if we were to follow our Lewis structure rules, we would end up with a positive charge on nitrogen, we would end up with a NO double bond, and we'd end up with an o, NO single bond with a negative charge. It's, it's, a, it's hidden within that NO2 condensed structure. Take the alpha proton off, one of the two, one is left, so again, three bonds to carbon. There is a hydrogen left with that, that negative charge. Back to chapter one a little bit, structure convention. We ignore that hydrogen that's left. But there's our alpha carbon, there's our alpha carbanion, and what would be analogous to the enolate would be resonating this into a CN double bond and then putting that uh, pi bond up onto oxygen. So you'd end up with a stabilized form looks like this that is analogous to the enolate. Okay, but nitro groups have an excellent um, place to put those electrons. So they are very um, stabilizing the negative charge, makes them much more acidic. All right, so what's better than one functional group um, stabilizing an alpha carbon? It's two functional groups stabilizing an alpha carbon, and they're always gonna be in the middle. One of the other purposes of this chart is to help us learn our functional groups. Um, and so this, with an alpha carbon in the middle, would be a beta diester, so uh, two esters, uh, beta apart from one another with an alpha carbon in the middle. We are more stable because that alpha carbon in the middle, we remove the proton, there's the alpha carbanion. It can resonate two ways. It can either resonate into the left-hand ester or it can resonate into the right-hand ester. And then that forms three resonance contributors instead of just two, greatly stabilizing that negative charge, thereby making the entire system more acidic than we would guess otherwise. Okay, so that's where the ten, the difference again for, a, for an ester with one single ester was a 25 pKa. By having two esters in the beta diester, the additional resonance contributor contributes to a reduction all the way down to 13 in pKa, so huge difference about 10 to the 12 in equilibrium constant in the acid-base dissociation equation. Beta dinitrile, same thing. It's about the same because esters are about the same as far as um, their stabilizing effect on the alpha carbanion. Okay, so dinitrile, same thing. 
Another um, uh, functional group we're going to see again in force is the beta keto ester. So esters rank higher in nomenclature than ketones. So we call that the main functional group. There's my ester. There's the alpha carbon. There's the beta keto ester. Again, stabilization to two positions plus a ketone is more stable in its enolate form than an ester. So we drop from 13 down to 11, a little bit more acidic by replacing an ester with a ketone. Okay, a beta diketone would take that down from 11 to 9 by replacing another ester with a ketone. Now you see, oh, there's an alpha carbon, there's an alpha carbon, but it's not the most acidic alpha carbon. The real alpha carbon is in the middle. That CH2 in the middle has two CHs that are, that are acidic, one at a time. We don't take off both, just one. Either one's fine, uh, but that is the most acidic position because it creates more resonance contributors and those outside two will not be deprotonated in the presence of that central alpha carbon. Finally, beta ketoaldehyde. Aldehyde is a little bit more acidic um, than ketones, so it drops from nine to six. Again, aldehyde wins nomenclature-wise, alpha to beta to, de to describe our functional group. So what do we want to make sure we get out all this? We want to be able to identify the functional groups um, any of them, maybe in the table, maybe not, be able to identify any uh, functional group with an acidic alpha CH. So polar, pi bond, and a carbon next door is what we're looking for. Be able to rank the functional groups I've just given you and explain their relative acidities as we discussed. Um, you need to know those pKa's within a unit or two as well to be able to appropriately pick a base in later reactions to deprotonate them. So we're gonna talk about that later. And then finally, we demonstrated the mechanism of deprotonation to form the enolate and alpha carbanion resonance contributors at the very beginning. We want to make sure we can do all those three things because they're going to be extremely important moving forward in the reactions of these alpha carbons. All right.